Brent Johnson, and today I'm at the Cathedral of the Holy Cross in Boston, Massachusetts, and with me is the organist, Richard Clark. Uh, Richard, tell me about this instrument we're here. Well, this is one heck of an instrument. Um, this is almost entirely tonally intact from 1875. It was built in 1875, dedicated on February 23rd, 1876. And that, this was E and G.G. Hook? E and G.G. Hook and Hastings, and Hastings. Okay. Opus 801. We like to call this organ 801 for short. It's a lot easier than a mouthful. That's <laughs> E and G.G. Hook and Hastings. So we just call it 801, and it's beloved. It's an affectionate name that organists all around Boston um, Call. They know what you're talking about when you say 801. 801, okay. So we're, we're, we're checking out 801 today. Well, I have to tell you, I've, yeah. I've heard recordings of this organ, and I've mm -hmm. seen pictures of it, but standing here in front of it, I just didn't have any idea of the scale of this instrument. About it. It's just, it, yeah. it's, a, it's a huge yeah. room. And what you see here, it goes back, uh, you can you could house a whole family rather comfortably <laughs> where, where with all the pipes laid out. There's another, I don't know how many feet back there, but it, it it's... It's like a hotel back there well, we'll have with to all of the 5,292 pipes wow, that are there. Okay. So what you just see here, and some of these are sounding, but they are pretty fat around. I mean, they're yeah, it's just it's just a big yeah. scale, of, you know, the case, the pipes. Sure. Yeah. Well, um, we were talking about how how this organ is organized, um, yeah. and some of the sounds in here. Just I would like to to hear yeah. them. Uh, tell me what's well, what's the best way to understand this instrument. <laughs> best way to understand. <laughs> that's a good question. The what is fascinating about this, 1875, this was the largest room. The architecture in pipe organs are always, in the best case scenario, they are, they are wedded together. And this is a good such example where the architecture is the largest building that uh, Ian Gigi Hook and Hastings had ever built anything in. Really, that would be the case for most anybody to have to fill a space like this. Now, you notice it's a three manual organ. There's a case for it that it could actually be four manuals, but part of that is the great division, the scale, you talk about scale being big, because you got to fill this. The scale being the width of the pipe compared to its length, and the scales are pretty tremendous. And this is one of the most unusual great divisions, or even unusual for hooks, so um, I'll show you this. There's, here's your sort of basic, um, your eight foot diapason that everything is based on, where your hymns are based on. Pretty woolly yeah. duck and it's, sound, and it's all by itself. Yeah, you, you think that that's making. Of course, you have your 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 great chorus, your four foot that's that's built on top of all of it. Eight four two, and then of course the mixture. Here's a really interesting aspect. There's a quint that's. That's five and a third. That, that gives it a little little bite to it, and then I add, add a sixteen. That makes for one of the most interesting choruses potentially. Yeah. But getting back to this diapason, there's an even bigger diapason on this one. This one's really big. The open di <laughs> Some of these are the ones that you can see, and if you think that this is lovely. This one just is like a big hug. that when you've got now that's by itself yeah, yeah now all of these stops are interesting by themselves which is the sign of the wonderful organ builder this one uh really you pull out for special occasion because mm. it's it's really pretty the scale is tremendous and again all of this was built to fill this room a among the other stops on the grate i'm just dealing with the grate right now eight foot gemshorn which is like another principle in a way but mm. a string and a principle is so useful A number of other strings, a viola, the gamba.
Notice oh, there's this brightness to it. Notice there's the scale of these are pretty tremendous. Here's a very quiet one. Almost, almost has a Vox quality to it. Yeah. But the, the scale is large. And then there's two flutes are just enormous. So they're really solo stops. Some of these stops could be solo stops, which is why I said this could this could have been a four. The solo manual. stops are sort of blended could, in with. It could have been, could have been, but really it was part of the purpose of filling this room. This is doppel flute. I'll put it against a a stop diapason on the swell. Yeah. It really stands out. Yeah. The Clarabella is to die for. <laughs> also big, fat, and a little a little bit less enormous. That's enormous in the room. So just we're sings just out over going everything. through it all. The, the forefoot on the grate is just enormous. Yeah. So they're all they're all designed to really fill that room up. So they're they they're bigger than than your normal grate division, and that's all in the grate. The grate is enormous. Number of ranks on the grate. Uh, we haven't gotten to the reeds yet, the mixtures, there's an enormous number of mixtures. Uh, here's one other very interesting, interesting thing that we've got to put in before we forget. All of these stops that you see here, every single one, everything you see here is an individual rank. Wow. There is not, no bar there's, no uni, there's no unification on wow. this entire thing. The only exception to that would be the tuba, which floats around. Okay. So the tuba, and you can bring it down. The only, unifi the only unification is the tuba at 8 and 4 and 16. So wow. you want to really be obnoxious, which I will be. Okay. A little, a little obnoxious, but very, and that's on eight, each, eight inches of wind. Uh, it's on a higher wind pressure. So every stop, everything that you pull out, that's you see every. There's a pipe for every keyboard here. There's 56. That's 56 pipes. That's 56. That's 56. Wow. That's not an <laughs> extension. There's no extension. These are, these are different ones. So the the trumpet stops, the, the reed stops on the grate. Um, 16, 8, and 4. These were all made by Zimmerman in Paris. Hmm. So there is a five rank cornet, which just is to die for on that. Does that cornet work as a solo stop by itself without the reed? Answered your question, yes. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> and the mixtures. So, and, and when I pulled out this sound, it's three stops. Three stops. That's it. We have a four rank mixture. We have a seven rank mixture, the cymbal and the, acu the acuta, which is another four rank mixture, which has uh, a seventh in it. So, it's <laughs> when, you're, when you're getting, say, very normal, let's pull out the big, the big dive. There's open 16. Again, it's reminding it's independent. Not an extension. <laughs> and the reason that's important is not only you have that many more pipes that are sounding, of course, but the the resonance and the warmth is that much more incredible. And all the scaling is probably. Yeah, so. so if you have this, the, your four rank mixture, pulling out the cymbal. to the top. So when you're at, when you're already at 11 and you need to go to 12, yeah. you know, you can go, this, this organ not only goes to 11, it goes to 12, 13, 14, yes, and it, not so much in volume, but the color, no, it's not, there's it, always another color to add. Right, which, it, it's surprising brightness, it's kind of, yeah. that, that seventh mixture there adds a, a very unique sound to it. it it, it surely does. Oh, and the other thing, and you can't have a great division without a 16-foot quintet. You can't have that, right? <laughs> yeah. 
What a great sound. Very, very colorful. <laughs> for The American organs aren't always known for their quints, but the colors on this one are really quite extraordinary. Yeah. Which brings us to one more really key point to this instrument. Every sound here not only is independent, all of them are intact from the original design mm. of the organ in 1875. Now, my predecessor, Leo Abbott, will tell you that that is not because it's actually not because of vision. It's really due to neglect. Uh, rather than vision. Mm -hmm. uh, the organ was uh, terribly neglected for decades. My predecessor, Leo Abbott, who was here for 33 years, is really responsible for everything you're hearing today. Uh, the organ was barely playable in the 80s. He arrived in 1986. Uh, John, Pope John Paul II was here in 1979. You can go downstairs, you can see the plaque for his chair. You can go sit in his chair if you want. You can come here and sit in his chair. Um, the organ was in awful shape. Wasn't all they had put like duct tape and you know band aids and stuff to keep it playing. Uh, they brought in <clears throat> uh, Rogers organ for you know Cardinal Madero's funeral, you know, 80, an 82 instrument. So um, Leo Abbott came here and, and man, you know, we we owe him uh, a great debt of gratitude. Uh, he would get his friends together and they would start cleaning the pipes. And of course, there's no money, it's hardly a shoestring budget, right? So they would. Uh, go downstairs, clean some of the pipes they could, raise a little money where they could, started doing concerts. We've done, I think, 33 consecutive. I've continued the annual organ restoration fund con uh, concerts. So we have the organ restoration fund, which uh, which keeps the, the restoration going. Leo Abbott got it to the point where every stop was playable. There were some stops that needed restoring and redoing. So. Now, of course, it's a matter of vision to keep it restored. <laughs> so now it has the historic status from the organ, uh, organ historical, or, historical, the OHS, the Organ Historical Society. Um, so now that vision. And of course, uh, the other really quirky aspect of this, if you've been listening along and you pull out your tuning fork and you, you listen to A440, this is really sharp. Oh, really? This is really sharp. Hmm. This, here's your tuning stop. Your tuning stop's the four foot octave. That's about 450 when it's 68 degrees, 450. Wow. Now, it's hmm. probably a couple degrees higher than that, so it's probably around 451, 452. During the summer, it gets up to about 456, <laughs> even with the air conditioning blasting. So it's almost a half step higher. Um, and the choir doesn't mind it because this is such a wonderful instrument to accompany with. It's like a warm hug. We should say uh, that yeah. some work has been done. Yeah, this a lot of work has been done. Yeah, is brand new, even console, though it looks like... 2003, the Andover Organ Company. So this console... Uh, is an interesting look to it, and it's uh, an historic replica as best as they could. There were lots of uh, some plans, blueprints back from uh, 1875, and we have lots. Of, we have some historic photographs as well. Okay. And uh, so th they, and you'll notice the pedal board as well is flat like a European flat pedal board. It's a little even wider than the average European pedal board. Oh, yeah. This is a unique pedal mm -hmm. board. It's a little extra wide, and of course, this is all according to what the specs were what they would have done to, to restore this. Okay. So, uh, and of course, we've got 21st century technology, uh -huh. which is the lovely bit we can program. But hidden away, so you yeah, can't hidden see. away, so you can't see it. I can press all kinds of things and change the stops and the pistons. We hide that away now. All right. So, well, let's continue yeah. through the sounds. Um, yeah. I guess I want to go to the swell division next. Yeah. Uh, tell me about this. Swell is, in, and in this organ, typical of 19th century. Uh, Organs only the swell division was enclosed. The choir division is, you know, like a positive in Europe, is not not enclosed, meaning you know that it's in a, in a inside the swell box and is under expression. Again, very warm diapason. Can be played by itself. The stop diapason. Something like that. Um, and, and they combine together for some lovely strings. The solitional. The spin sound. We're going to come across the one and only stop that is not original to this organ. Oh, really? One. One. So 101 ranks. Only one. Now, the label says Quinta Dana, yeah. which is true up to a point. The bottom, the bottom several notes, the bottom ten notes are, in fact, the original Quinta Dana okay. sound. So this is two Quinta Danas on, oh. on one organ, which is also unusual. That's, yeah. So you got to listen carefully to get this Quint. 
then then it stops. <laughs> so you can kind of you can kind of hear that. Yeah, just barely. But Leo Abbott uh, wanted a Celeste, so the rest of the rank is a is a Celeste. Okay. Now, why that opportunity arose? Leo didn't ask to remove it. They were in fact stolen. Oh. There were there were ranks that disappeared I see. over the years. Not only in the Galactic, there were some that disappeared. Another in the same case was the Roar Flute. So the Roar Flute also is another stop that somehow disappeared, and there were a few samples down in the base low. That one was restored by Andover. Uh, did that so on the choir division. So a, re a recreation. Yeah, though. a recreation. But that, that's it. That's it. So that point. So we do have a Celeste. So this organ was designed without a Celeste, and almost really, you don't really. I mean, it's lovely to have, but um, it's so warm, and the strings are so beautiful on this. Uh, it wasn't the absolute must-have stop that we feel about, like in the 20th century. You know, so but we have a Celeste. That's the only one. Here's the other fun thing on this: we've got an Aeolian, a real genuine Aeolian stop. And for those who understand what its purpose is, you can barely hear it. You can barely hear it. Barely. Okay, if you can hear it, and, there, and that's a good thing. There's a reason for that. So the Aeolian is designed that, particularly when you had to have your, when you didn't have the motor being pumped uh, by a machine. Uh, this one may have, but the idea was that you had a very, 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 very soft stop that you could practice during the very long homilies or practice, play something, you know, during the elevation. Well, you might play something during the elevation, but, uh, and I actually, it comes in handy. Huh. I use that, I'll, there, if there's another mass going on, sometimes I will have to warm up, and I use this. So I yeah. use that, and it does add a little to the strings if you pull all these out. some more through it there yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, so we have uh, some lovely flutes there's a violin here this is amazing when you're accompanying chant it adds just just the right amount I'm adding the violin in now So you have these big stops, but you also have these incredibly subtle and useful just to the right measure. I suddenly became this violina uh, convert <laughs> where I was like, oh, the stop doesn't do much. And then I was like, it's my favorite stop now. Yeah, yeah. So um, among other favorites, uh, you could add the forefoot to add color. But if you add the violina, it gives that just that little more direction. Uh, and of course, the the mixtures uh, in your 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 chorus here. The oboe is a lovely foundational stop too. Um, here's the other unique thing about this organ. Every division has a cornet. So there's a, a dolce cornet on the on the swell and if you add the reeds in 16, 8, and 4 reeds. Mm -hmm. Add just a little bit of that cornet. Okay. Just brings it out over the top a little yeah. bit. The of course, there's the cornet we've already looked at on the grate. There's a cornet on the pedal five rank. Of course, added with other things. Huh. Um, and but the most gorgeous one is on the choir division. Now, that is a solo sound. And I know we're skipping around, but One's astounding, but anyway, we, that, that's fun. But every one of them, it's very difficult to find an organ that's got all these beautiful cornets. Uh, and the oboe, of course, is great as a foundational stop in the French tradition.
Yeah, the corn opi yeah. opians, what that's called. Corn opian with the oboe, yeah. another great French tradition sound. Uh, and of course, speaking of which, we have the incredible vox humana tremolo on this. So this was also made in France as well. So this is the best vox humana with tremolo brought together with this 32 foot combination that you're going to hear this side of Paris. You want to, you want to, you're not in Paris, you want to hear some Paris. This is it. So we, we pull out the 32 on the pedal, just the Bordone here, a little, little soft, 16. The Vox Humana, which without the tremolo, sounds a little like an accordion in a way, right? <laughs> you add uh, the, the stop diapason, which gives it some warmth. You have the tremolo. Now you got something. And this, the speed is, I was talked to the speed of the tremolo, I'd asked uh, Leo Abbott, I said, you know, do, do you like that slow, maybe a little slow? He's like, no, 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 that's, that's a speed that, that you know, Dupre likes. So, yeah. oh, I'm not touching it. <laughs> Dupre likes that speed, so we're going to leave that one alone. Yeah. So, it sounds very French. Yes. So, yeah, and, and it's so much fun now. In this architecture, we're getting back to this room, as large as it is, it's five seconds of reverb in here. Now, one of the amazing things that's brought this instrument back to prominence in the last few years, a couple of things. Um, and part of its neglect, perhaps, was the vast amounts of carpeting that was, <laughs> that was once in here. Uh, for many, 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 many years, uh, decades, decades, possibly back to the 40s, there was this ugly green carpeting. We got rid of that, replaced it with stone and marble. Okay, so the transformative change, it transformed the instrument. So now we have... It must have been like finding a new yeah. organ up here. So, well, it was. Because the sound of the organ would die out about halfway through. You were at an organ concert, you knew, well, let's sit in the back third. It sounds beautiful. And it was glorious. It was gorgeous. Nice two and a half seconds. Nice, nice warm reverb. Now it's about five. It's about mm -hmm. five seconds. And, and it takes... You could put several hundred people in here, and it's still going to be about five seconds. So, right. um, and it, liturgically now, it's used to, uh, it can fill the room, so now it's back to not just being a nice instrument to hear in the back of the church, but a nice and incredibly liturgically supportive Does it actually get instrument. more use in the ser services Exclusively. now? Exclusively. It's all we do. We're up here. It's, we only use this. And so now we do things with Catholic television, which then are syndicated nationally, so this instrument has been heard you know, it could be heard by millions of people. So we've had, you know, Christmas or Easter that's been syndicated. Something to add to your list for why yeah. we got to get carpet out of these churches. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, carp carpet, carpeting, here, here's my thing. You can look this up. I wrote an article, and you can look this up. It's called Carpeting is the Enemy of Congregational Singing. <laughs> oh, it, tr it truly is. I was a little harsh in my words. <laughs> a little harsh, but uh, carpeting, too much too much of it, or, you know, it, it's a danger zone. So many of us have fought the carpet battles. So. Yes, and lost. <laughs> well, we want, you know, we were fortunate to win this, and we owe that to Monsignor O'Leary as well. That's wonderful. Oh, Let's go to the choir now. Semi choirs. There's about 17 ranks in the choir wow. division. We did a little, um, a little. We still have ongoing restoration projects. Now everything's playing, but there still is leather from 1875, which, by the way, is made so well, it still kind of works. There's still electrical stuff from the 1920s, and what year is it now? That's a century. Uh, there are still mechanical issues. So when it's humid, nice weather like this, the organ will fool you into being in phenomenal condition. <laughs> go in the winter, things get dry. Uh, it really, um, the, it, the need for restoration reveals itself, becomes exposed. So, but anyway, we did, so we've been doing little projects along the way. We'd like to do a whole bunch all at once, but we did uh, one recently to restore some of the mechanical, the action, uh, the pull down action on the choir division. So I had to suffer without the choir division. That's oh. 17 ranks. That's wow. about an organ in of itself. Yeah. Then there's none of my friends would cry me a river. It's like, you know, 101 <laughs> minus 17. Yeah, sorry. I had what I thought was the largest two manual organ. Yeah. Anyway, but the number of colors, this open diapason, eight foot open diapason. <laughs> Warm like all the others, a little darker. Yeah. They're all unique, a little darker. This 
Geigen principle here. It's like another, this one is it's just a string sound that's beautiful. I almost call that a viola. Yeah, it it is. is, and when it's added to the when you add it to the open diapason. Incredible warmth yeah, and brilliance there. The melodia, all these beautiful, there's, well, which flute do you want to choose? Today we're going to start <laughs> with the, the melodia, right? <laughs> Fun little ditty. <laughs> uh, there's the concert flute. Put them two together and you've got just this incredibly warm sound. Then we have the restored roar flute, a little more, a little more um, articulation to it. Add the forefoot to that. Uh, so you've got, the, you got, you got your flutes, you've got all these eights to choose from. Uh, your lovely quint. Fute Fugara, which will always add a little little bite direction to anything. Your open diapason, your eight and four, will just add to your congregational singing or your choir accompaniment. It's a formidable sound for just that. Uh, your sixteen. All of these divisions have a 16. The Dulciana is just a nice soft string. And the interesting bit here, you've got this warm, warm clarinet. Another fun one is this Cor Anglais at 16. Now this one, huh. it, Occasionally use that as a solo if I have something I've, I've brought it as a solo stop into the pedal, okay, um, or just the solo stop, <laughs> you know, play play it up an octave. But It's more oboe-like. Yeah, it's it, it, but, oblique, it's, but it's, so it's so just a, a touch darker. And, color, yeah. and how these play off of each other. So between a figoro and a chord. Yeah. yeah, very nice. So um, that's run through most. I think. Yeah, I think that's the choir. Okay. Kind, of, kind of hit that. You know, the fun stuff. The fun stuff there. Well, then it takes us to the pedal division. Yeah, yeah, pedal. Um, gosh, what to choose from there? So. And everything's independent here. You said. Everything nothing is uniform. Everything. Nothing there's, is there's, there's nothing. Excellent. There's nothing. There's, there's no, <laughs> no 32 extension. Yeah. Okay. Right. And you know, God bless Leo Abbott again. Um, I was saying I was playing, playing some Franck uh, in concert, you know, last week, and said I remember our discussions like I don't know 20 years ago. He was talking about raising the money to get some big enormous cracks that were in the 32 repaired and and um, and uh, restored and worked on and not playing, getting the bottom notes played. So 32, it's 32 <laughs> feet long. This is, this is not like a half length pipe. This is the real oh, deal. Wow. You go back there and uh, you can, so you're not gonna hear this, you're gonna feel this. Work our way up a little bit. But of, of course, those are stops. Like many of the stops, they're intended to be played with something else. Sure, so sure. when you have the 16-foot board, which is a nice, nice round stop, maybe we'll add the violin. Now we have the 32. Feel it right there. So you've got wow. some amazing stuff. The violin, you've got a 16. 
which gives a lovely direction. An eight foot violoncello by itself. Together with the 16. Lovely orchestral type feel to it. A um, couple eight foot's the octave. Scale on that thing's enormous, yeah. right? <laughs> the bel gamba, as if that's not enough. You got a bel gamba, you want to use something different. Huh. So much brighter. I think that's officially the first pedal bell gamba I've ever seen. You might be on a pedal, you're not going to find that. Four foot super octave. You can play a melody just on yeah. that. Just play the melody in the four foot down there. Corne, of course, intended to be added with other stops. Your open diapason, which is <laughs> very big. Man, you want to see how fat around that thing is? The 16 foot open oh. diapason. Another one that you just feel. Yeah. Bring out your other stops. And then add the cornet. Kind of almost makes it feel like, let's put the 16 on. Almost makes it sound like there's a 32 in it. Huh. But it gives it direction. on top of yeah there. absolute absolute clarity and speaking of 32s uh <laughs> leo abbott really wants a 32 foot in this so yeah we just need another hundred thousand bucks we'll maybe for that right we, we've got plans for it you know it's the one thing that's missing the organ doesn't have a 32 foot bombard we talking the real deal none of this half line stuff the real deal so well, that's, maybe, that's, that's, that's another dream maybe you know? we'll get there someday <laughs> that's yeah we're gonna we're gonna worry about restoring all the mechanisms, maybe get some leather that's not from 1875. Get mm -hmm. some, I mean, there's some new leather in there, but we got to get <laughs> new leather into everything and get all the mechanics so that they're working 12 months out of the year instead of maybe, you know, eight to nine months out of the well, year. Well, I'm, I'm glad we're here so, on a good warm day and when yeah, uh, everything seems to be working together just wonderfully. Yeah, yeah, it's, this is fun. Here we see one of the two huge double rise reservoirs that supply the wind for this instrument. Uh, they've been re-leathered, but they still have their original historic rocks for weights. Now this ladder is uh, a little bit shaky. Now here, straight in front of you, is one of the outer pedal chests, which has, I believe, the 16-foot dulciana, and then on the outside, the 8-foot flute, both of them open wood. Now, as we enter, we're in kind of an alley with a lot of pipes. Uh, to your right is the pedal upper work chest, and I use the term upper work lightly, but the biggest pedal 16 foot flues are on the out chest on the outsides of the organ, and they're C and C sharp chests for the rest of the pedal the manuals. I call this upper work almost jokingly, but it has on it the pedal five rank cornet the four-foot choral bass, the eight-foot bell gamba, which is huge, 
the pedal 10 2 thirds quint, which is stopped wood, an eight foot open flute. And then behind that, there's an eight foot trumpet and the 16 foot trombone. You can see the resonators at the top. So and this is the seaside. So uh, yeah, there's uh, just as many pipes on the other side. Now, here we are on one of the outer great chests. The great actually has three wind chests. The center wind chest basically has the principal chorus and the reeds and the mixtures. The outer chests, which are C and C sharp, so diatonic, have a lot of the bin big, uh, the big wind dropping stops. You have the, uh, the 16 foot open. There is a, I think a small eight foot. There is a, one of my favorite stops is the eight foot bell diapason. It's the diapason with a, a bell on the top. Gives it a, peculiar, a particularly lovely sound and those pipes are really heavy. And then there's, I think, a four foot of some sort, the doppel flute, a four foot harmonic flute, a melodia. Oh, that, no, I'm sorry, that's the doppel flute. This is the 16 foot, 16 foot, eight foot melodia, doppel flute, and then an eight foot string, and then an eight foot another string, and then a bell, the bell gamba with its, uh, its tapered with bells on the top, and then the great five rank cornet. So all the big, uh, so the, all the eight foot stops and the 16 foot manual stops and the mix, the things that require a bit of wind are on two separate chests. If you look up above and that, uh, that kind of cradle, that on each side are the low six pipes of the great 16 foot open diapason, which form parts of the, uh, the towers on the sides of the case. Some of the facade pipes speak. It's the bases of the great eight-foot stops. Uh, and the, the outer flats are primarily dummies. But uh, this is the center chest. It's also diatonic, but it's small. So there are three chests, as I said. There's the center chest, which basically has the principal chorus, the mixtures, and the reeds. And then the, the big eights and other stuff on the two outer chests. So we have here. The eight-foot open diapason. There's an eight-foot, uh, looks like a gamp, but it's pure tin. There's a two and two-thirds and a two-foot. Then there is a mixture, and a, a, it was a three-rank mixture, a four-rank akuta, and the sambal that goes up to seven ranks and includes a tierce and a septiem in it. And then for the reeds, we have. 16 eight foot and four foot trumpets. Now the 16 foot reed was made here in this country by the hooks, but the eight foot and the four foot trumpets on the grate were made by Zimmermann in Paris. And they have French shallots. Again, that's the, uh, the center grate chest. And as you'll notice, um, all the mixtures are cone tuned still. Now, this is the choir division, which is unenclosed. So at the back, you have the 16-foot Liebluck, and then you have the 8-foot open. Looks like there's uh, narrow and wider scaled strings. There's a concert or harmonic flute open, and then a, I think a 4-foot flute. There you have a, uh, the chimney flute is relatively recent, the roar flute this organ was a uh, similar scaling to the organ at Buffalo, the 1870s. This organ is 1875, the Buffalo organ is 1876. So we took the scales of the roar flute, choir roar flute in Buffalo and duplicated them and it fit perfectly here. You have then another harmonic flute, upper work. Then you have the uh, 16 foot reed and the eight foot clarinet. The swell actually has two chests. There's a back chest that those, those pull down trackers
and the pull-down box go straight up to one set of pallets, and then the horizontal trackers bring them to another set of squares, and they open up a, a front set of pallets. It's, a, it's quite a large organ. So here we are outside the swell on the upper walkboard. Uh, to my right is the tuba stop. These pipes were built by Hook. And keep in mind that this church was the largest, one of the, probably the largest church constructed in the country at the time, seating 2,000. And at that time they were, Francis Hastings uh, was assuming control of the tonal aspect of the company and started experimenting with larger scales for larger rooms. So uh, the tube, I think, is on 8 inches wind pressure, so they, uh, they started making loud sounds for, for big rooms. Um, this organ, w in, is, uh, the, this was 1875, and, eight, and this room seats 2,000. It was quite sizable. But one year later, in 1876, they built a large organ for the Centennial Exposition, the 1876 Centennial Exposition in Philadelphia. That organ was in a room with a floor space of approximately 25 acres. So, and it, not, it didn't quite have to full, full, fill it, but it had, to, it had to be, make its presence known. So that also had large scale. So I like to think that this organ was their practice organ for the Centennial Exposition. This, this organ has 102 ranks, so they basically used every type of pipe construction and, and tone for this instrument and then chose the best for their slightly smaller organ for, uh, Buff uh, for the Centennial Exposition in Buffalo, which is now at St. Joseph's Cathedral. Another interesting thing about this organ, I like to point out that it kind of has a history of or, uh, uh, organ internal lighting. There are, there's piping and old gas fixtures, there's conduit and old incandescent sockets, and now there's fluorescent lights. And I suppose one day, eventually, there'll be LED lights, but such is progress. But the pipe work and the Winchester are still from 1875 and still functioning. Now let's go in the swell. Here we are inside the swell box, and you can see that there are actually two wind chests, as I mentioned before, back and front. And each wind chest has reeds over the pallet box. It's good that they divided them this way because you're only reaching through one, the two sets of reeds at most. So you have, it looks like, the, the Vox, the 16-foot uh, contrafagato, and the oboe, and then on this chest you have the trumpet, which goes harmonic in the treble, and the clarion. It's reachable. At least they made, they had space. I think this was the, the the Buffalo organ had more space because people were uh, visitors to the exhibition were able to walk through it. But there's there's enough space that you can reach things. The chests are divided in such a way that you can actually reach every pipe. And then if you look in the corners over there, I think that's probably that may be the that may be the original uh, 1875 hemp rope <laughs> tying those diapason pipes in place. Yeah. Eventually one day it may, it may end up being uh, replaced. And you have, the, you have the, notice the counterweights for the shades. And the gas fixture.
over here is the ventil action to turn on the wind supply to the tuba. Part of it is original and part of it is later. When the organ, uh, when the cathedral was restored in 2019, about half of the organ's 102 ranks came out. All of the facade pipes and the dummy soup cans, or canisters all came out. All of the great pipe work came out. All of the pedal pipe work came out except for the big open woods. The swell and the choir pipes were sheltered in place. It, uh, required a couple weeks to take things out and cover the organ and then a couple weeks or more to uh, put things back. And we came back at the appointed date at time when we were told that we'd have the cathedral to ourselves. It was still a beehive of activity. They were still laying the floor. So we put in the biggest pipes, uh, hoi uh, lifted the rest of the pipe trays in the gallery, covered them and said we'll come back when the cathedral is no longer a construction zone. So we came back that summer to uh, put everything back in tune it. And the organ received its first through tuning in living memory. Those are dummy cylinders. And the, the tallest one is 10 feet high and about 16 inches in diameter. They were just put up there for scale. The row of pipes along the back are the 16 foot open wood and the 32 foot contraborden. I think the 32 foot contraborden is, I forget which is which, but we actually had the contraborden pipes out about 10 or more years ago, we, uh, as part of the ongoing restoration process, we took the low 12 pipes out and restored them, had to uh, patch the, fill in the cracks and re repack the stoppers. It was the first time the 32 foot octave had been heard in living memory. I'm truly blessed. I thank Leo every day that I'm in here. I start my days. I drop off my two sons over at the St. Paul's Choir School in Cambridge. I'm usually back here at about 7.30 in the morning, and I start my day here with the sun coming in through those stained glass windows in the east. We're facing east. And, the, and I'm not a morning person by nature. I don't want to be here, but you, know, you have kids, and you don't have much choice, right? So uh, I'm truly blessed to be in my days and to, to be here. This is my happy place. You know, we get stuck doing lots of administrative work and all of the other things. I can come back up here, and um, uh, this is this is a blessing, uh, not just for me. This is a blessing for we want this to be a blessing for everyone who comes here to worship here, people who want to to want to experience uh, great concerts, but also to be uplifted in their minds, their hearts, and their spirits. And this organ also also is a phenomenal instrument for accompanying choirs. Uh, like I say, they're they're singing up against this. It's like a warm hug that just helps support them. So the choirs definitely feel better, they sound better, they, they don't mind the sharp pitch they've gotten used to it. <laughs> Just don't tell them how sharp it is. Yeah. So uh, that's really what it is. This instrument is in service to the people. Uh, it's a wonderful thing that's been admired as a great piece of artistry, extraordinary artistry that is very difficult to, to uh, duplicate. And of course, one of the most, absolutely the most important organ builders and one of the most important organs in the United States of America.
Richard, thank you so much. This has been a delight to see this instrument. I've known about this organ yeah. for many years. Uh, I've seen pictures of it, like I said, and yeah. now I'm finally getting to, to sit here and feel that warm hug you're talking about. Yeah. It's, it's just oh, it's an warm. amazing sound in this beautiful room. I'm so glad the room's been cleaned up and restored and no carpet. Uh, you just can't ask for more. No, it, it is a beautiful blend of instrument and architecture unified together, and this is one of the best examples of that anywhere in the country right now. And it deserves to be uh, protected and restored. So right. uh, I know there's an ongoing uh, appeal to uh, get funds for. There is. There the is the Oregon Restoration Fund, which was started by Leo Abbott. Okay. Uh, in honor of his father, Arthur. And uh, it continues on churchgiving.org slash organ. Okay. Should do it. Or find a way to get in touch with me and I'll lend you to the well, right we'll, place. We'll uh, confirm that. We'll put the, the link down yeah, in the description. The, or, the Oregon well Restoration as, Fund, and it, it helps. Uh, not only the ongoing projects we have about we have you know several zeros worth of no. of uh, <laughs> more immediate needs but we we want this to work for the next generation and you have ongoing concerts if people want to yep. come hear things so we'll yep. put a link to the church's yep. website down below and that's right uh, i'll give you the link to that holycrossboston.com there we go concerts and so all that's down fun. in the description you yep. can find out how to contact him if you want to learn more about this beautiful instrument right. uh, it's been uh, great to show it off to you if uh, you enjoyed the video enjoyed this organ and the great job that richard did then please give us a thumbs up down below while you're down there make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click the bell for notifications because we still have a couple of really great organs coming out here from the boston area and i can't wait to show them to you until those videos are out though remember you can find streaming classical organ music on our three stations organlive.com positively baroque and the organ experience you can find those all on their website or we have a new app for ios and android devices uh thank you again richard this has been fantastic uh, great day in boston today I'm glad the weather cooperated and the construction and the crowd noise weren't too bad <laughs> it's pretty good this place is open to the public so we did pretty well wonderful we'll come we here and well. see this instrument and then hear uh some great music uh at the cathedral of the holy cross until next video i'm Britt johnson thank you for watching There's a lot going on. We got, the, we got the bells. We have the bells going off. We got sirens. This is the city. We are in the city, in fact. It's uh, give us the time right now. It's going to go off just now. So. Okay. So the funny thing with the tuning is when the when the bells ring, it chimes C at 440. So we joke C 440, and then we play this C. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's a bit sharper. It's it's quite a bit sharper.